Did you know that your Acropora undergoes significant internal changes when you frag it? Did you know that it takes over a month for those changes to return to normal? How does an Acropora coral decide to grow a new branch rather than just going straight up? Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Men, and this time we are talking about a preprint of a paper titled Axial Canal Regulated the Process of Coral Branching and Calcareous Transportation in Acropora. Now, a preprint paper just means that this is fresh out of the research team's labs. It hasn't been fully peer-reviewed yet, and there could be changes made throughout that process. That said, the paper is really interesting. I think you've all looked at the coral in your reef tank and wondered about what's happening inside it at some point, right? Are all of the polyps of an Acropora coral connected internally somehow? Are they all individual animals maybe? How do they grow? Where do the new polyps even come from? This paper answers a lot of these questions. In Acropora, there are a few anatomical bits that you should just know about first. A branch of Acropora has a bunch of polyps spiraling around a central core of the branch. The polyps live inside corolites, or chalices as the paper calls them, which are just raised cups that protect the polyp living inside. In the central core of the branch, there are numerous different channels carrying things like nerve bundles and more chemicals, what have you, all throughout the colony. At the very center of the branch is the axial canal, and that's the largest of the internal channels. The axial canal travels vertically through the entire branch of the coral. The axial polyp, a distinguishing feature of Acropora corals, lives at the very end of this canal. It's from this canal that new branches are formed, though we still don't know exactly how a coral decides where exactly a new branch should be. When your Acropora coral is growing, the axial polyp buds off new polyps. The skeleton grows throughout this process, and eventually you've got a new coralite on the edge of your branch with its very own tiny little polyp. Sometimes, for reasons unknown, these new coralites bring a bit of the axial canal with them. And when this happens, that new polyp becomes a brand new axial polyp and a branch forms. Now, Something really interesting happens if you cut the branch. Maybe you're trimming a colony that's grown too large, you're cutting frags to sell or trade, whatever the reason, when you cut the coral, it triggers a process of rebuilding internally in that coral. The axial canal normally doesn't play a large role in the transport of calcium, except in this case. Immediately, of course, nothing much changes. The coral is sending signals about the damage throughout its network of nerves, triggering the production and the transportation of calcium and other building materials up to that damaged area. Within a couple weeks, the damage has healed and the branch has begun growing again. But internally, there's still a quite a bit going on. See how the axial canal here in purple is full of just specks of skeletal material? That's because the axial canal is playing a large part in the transportation of calcium to the damaged area. In fact, there's so much calcium in the axial canal that little bits of skeleton have started to grow even in the central axial canal by just day 14 after the damage took place. This random growth of the skeleton in the axial canal peaks around day 21 and the extra skeleton occupies nearly half of the canal at this point. By a month or so after the branch was cut, the axial canal is starting to clear up and things are getting back to normal. The little bits of skeleton that were clogging up the central canal have largely dissolved, their material being used for other growth throughout the branch. I wanted to do this video because often we're trading very fresh frags amongst each other. These frags sometimes don't do so well, and we chalk it up to our tanks not being the best environment, or maybe our lights are different, or maybe the frag was just too fresh. I think if we gave our frags at least that month to recover before selling them, we'd all have a better success rate. Give that axial canal time to clear up. From the paper, we can see that it takes at least a month or so 
for the axial canal to begin looking anything like it normally does. While it's full of the skeletal material, it's likely that that canal cannot do whatever it normally would be doing, or at least not as well. Maybe that means that coral is more susceptible to disease or stress in that state. That could be why some frags seem so sensitive. That about does it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did and you want to see more videos like it, then subscribe to the channel. If you've got any questions or comments, things like that, leave them in the comments down below. Ideas for new topics? Let me know. We'll see what we can do. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and have a fantastic day. Bye.